Gary Goldman. Are we friends? Yes, I no, consider. We're not. No, okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know you. Right. This is kind of wild that the first time we're hanging out is on like being recorded. Well, we did meet at Caroline's in around 2007. Wow. And we talked for a little bit at like a Christmas party or That's something like correct. that. That's correct. Yeah. I was intimidated. Or maybe it was 2000. By... You were intimidated by me? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. That's unusual. I disagree. My, like, everyone that I started comedy with, you were like the gold standard. Really? Yes. It's news to me. <laughs> Someone should have told you this. Yeah. Uh, I think comedians, we tend to talk shit to each other's faces and good behind oh, yeah, yeah, our yeah, backs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've, I've like talked... parents. <laughs> yes. I've talked good behind your back a lot. Oh, that's so nice. God to forbid hear. I tell you. Right. I, because I remember like we'd be writing jokes and it was like, oh no, Gary Goldman would make this last for 30 minutes. Like he could oh. write about this, <laughs> like this joke, we should keep uh, milking it. That's what we'd say. Right, like, right. Milking it and getting yeah. every possible angle. Right, because it, it came from, I think, being in LA or maybe even in Boston where it was so hard to get on stage mm. that you couldn't really try out new stuff. You had to have stuff that worked and try to make that longer. So that was my, it was like a, what do you call that? Necessity, out of necessity. But I used to beat myself up using you. Really? <laughs> flagellate myself with your act um, because I'd be like, why can't I write more jerks about this? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, Gary Goldman can write 40 minutes on sugar cookies. Like, <laughs> like I'm suck. Like, it, uh -huh. you know, a lot of people go like, I want to become a comedian because of that person. I wanted to stop doing comedy every time I saw you. Oh, well, I feel that way with so many comedians. Yeah. Brian Regan was that way for Ooh. me. Every time I saw him, I would think, why do I even How do you have 40 minutes bother? on peanut butter and jelly? Oh, I know. I and, <laughs> and approaches and angles that nobody's even considered. Like, he, the one thing that I always say, it's enough with the airplane humor, yeah. unless you're Brian Regan. <laughs> In which case, and you get a fresh take. Yes, a fresh take about how the, the <laughs> pilot has found $20 million, and he's trying to figure out how to split it up before that. That's why they can't take off in time, because we're going to split it up amongst everybody on the plane. I mean, he's just inspiring. One of my favorite. Yeah, stories. but also he makes you want to quit. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct, because I'm just like, I could never right. think that way. Yes. Yes. You know, but I yes. always, I always had this thought about you where I was like, you know, cause I think comedians for the most part, like I think, and part of the reason I do it is you can kind of release your shame by talking about the grossest parts of yourself and just sort of, and then people laugh. So you're able right. to alchemize yeah. it into something good, you know, I'm yeah. like, oh, well, all of these horrible things that happened can't be for nothing because yes. I then can make people laugh. I can pay yes. my bills. Like, There's that's... redemption and revenge. And yes. But I remember like the first couple of years I watched you, I sort of was like, oh, there's not a lot of darkness here. Yeah. You know? Right. And I was always curious, like, right. is there just no darkness at all? No, or why? there was so much darkness, but I, I didn't have the confidence or maybe even the skill level to, to make it funny. I would try every once in a while. I would try to talk about something on stage and then if it didn't work right away I'd be like ah, it's too dark I can't I can't go in that direction and yeah because I remember um, you had a joke uh, you had a joke that was um, Gary's doing ASMR with the mic <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you had a joke I'm gonna botch it but it was like okay. can someone please invent a, a orange juice that you can drink within two days of brushing your teeth oh yeah 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 or something i remember that or a, yeah. or a toothpaste you can use with it two days yeah. before brushing your teeth yeah so a toothpaste that yeah i can't remember it either but it was about that it about was the something taste, that yeah. was like everyone's had that problem <laughs> but yeah. no comedian had put it in the wording that made it like maximum like relatable and funny and i just remember going like that can't be his biggest struggle. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Because like, if there's a comedian performing not talking about their demons, like right. what's going on yeah. with them. And I remember when I heard you were going through some tough times, I was like, it just like was so yeah. overwhelming and just sort of like, oh, yeah, he never got to release it on stage. He never got right. to sublimate it into his work. Yeah. Well, I think... Yeah, I mean, I may have I may have written myself into a corner where it's like nobody wants to hear about the misery of the the cookies guy. 
<laughs> and and so it was hard to make that make that adjustment and so i had to do it rather dramatically like like to go go up there and talk about the level of depression i had say when i moved out here in 2000 it wasn't that compelling there weren't i wasn't hospitalized i, I would just sound like a lot of other comedians who were struggling and then when i i guess when i got to the point where i was in hospital and and what am i british in the hospital <laughs> In Ugh. hospital. Oh. oh my god! I want to throw up. We now. get it. You have health. Yeah, insurance. in the in the hospital, I and then I did. When I was taking my yeah, tea in hospital. Yes, yes, and then and then electroconvulsive therapy and all the other things was like, oh, okay, now it's now it's different from from most of the other comedians, and also uh, if I go on stage looking and shaking like this because my anxiety was so bad that I was shaking all the time and and. If I go on stage doing this, somebody's going to be like, "What the what the hell is wrong with this guy?" Yeah. So I had to address it. So it was he had too many again, sugar cookies. Uh, again, necessity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too yeah, much you, orange juice. Yes, he overate. Yeah. Do you find that the word depression is being overused these days? Like, just well, no. But I, I also think. I mean, I I agree with what you're saying. But there's also I have to tell people that you don't have to be at the level I was to go get help. Yes, yes. I mean, I got help early on at a level that was far from that. That was just, I was just a very high functioning mm -hmm. depressive who, who could stay up really late getting the things done that I had been unable to get done all day long. And also I had kind of a, a rhythm to my depression where I would feel much better at night than I did in the morning. So and you'd talk yourself out. Yeah. Of yeah. And then there were, there were sort of periods of three to six months where I felt great and I would get everything done and then fall apart and, and go back into a, into a hole for a while. So there was a, a does it become like an amnesia where you're like, Oh, that was, that was just a phase that passed. I'm if, out of the woods. The thing is, is that I think I needed it to get this bad. Mm in order for me not to have that am amnesia yeah because i i find that this recovery seems to be the sturdiest because i'm so vigilant yeah like we were just talking how i'm like i have to run today or i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna spend <laughs> the rest of the week in the fetal position because i i i, I really need it especially when i travel traveling yeah. is is you get out of your routine and and it's it's hard to maintain yeah. And I also find, I mean, traveling is exhausting, I think, especially for sensitive people because you're around yes. so many people you don't know. You're uh -huh. taking on their stuff. You're taking on their energy. You strike me as empathic. Like, like it's funny when people are like, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't text you. I've been traveling all day. And yeah. my brain is always like, you mean you were sitting in one place for eight hours? No, I know. You couldn't send one no. text. Like, what is no. so exhausting about traveling? Yeah. Like, you got to keep track of your bags. <laughs> you got to make sure you're at the gate. But otherwise, like, what's right. so tiring about it? Yes. I, yeah, I actually find myself a little bit free when I'm in the, yeah, when I'm in the airport. It's like, I love it. Yeah. But, it, it, but I do think for people like us, sensitive people, and are constantly taking on other people's stuff and judging and looking for jokes. Like I do find in an airport, yeah. my brain is kind of an overdrive because I'm so disgusted by people's behavior oh, I know. <laughs> that I have to I obsess know. over it. I know. I know but you I'm, take up seven seats with one backpack. Yeah. I'm, oh my gosh. <laughs> the wild amount of <laughs> injustices <laughs> that I, that I witness out during the day. And, and you know, the New York subways, yeah. there are, there are men who are taking up two, two spaces. <laughs> and an old lady is barely holding yeah, on she's, to the, she's, yes, she's barely holding, <laughs> holding on and slipping and sliding all over the place. And this guy needs so much space for his two legs. And he's, it, it drives me insane. When I see someone at the airport, sitting and they put one bag on each side yes. of them yes Dude, it should be in front of you on the on the chair one sh you get one yeah. chair yeah i don't care if the whole thing's empty yes it's just it's it's like compact yes why you can't can check it yes check your luggage why can't everyone be as <sighs> neurotic neurotic and full of and shame. not want to take up any space <laughs> as as a us it everybody is, they're, oh. they're trash people just put their trash on the seat which is wild they're sitting yes. on the floor lying down or people who don't have an anxiety attack trying to figure out where to put their trash at whole foods between the compost and the recycling and, and i i just what compost is you can't include the paper yes holder it's, you have to yes. empty it out it's the rinds man okay. <laughs>
<laughs> also, who's throwing away your food at home? Finish it. <laughs> there should be nothing left. Yes. For $18, right. I'm scraping. There's nothing. There's right. no, I'm eating the rinds. Yes. I'm consuming all of it for that amount of money. Every right. seed, every rind. Yes. Um, I, I mean, I just... But I'll see a plastic cup in the compost, and I want to burn the entire place down. I used to. I always think everything is a scam, and for the longest time, <laughs> I just thought it was all going to the same place and just giving oh, people the idea, maybe the illusion. Is. You know, maybe it is. Like, what are the chances? That's are the, really that's the reveal at the end of our lives. Dude, it all goes to one bin. <laughs> that's what I assume, or maybe that's just the delusion I tell myself because I don't want to go through the whole thing. Yeah. Um. But uh, I in watching your special, it was. It was I hate saying this, but this is what people say. I hate that when I watched it, I was like, oh, my God, I never would have known. Do you hate it when people say that? No. I mean, I feel like it's it's part of the – I don't know if it's part of the illness, but part of my version of the illness was keeping it from all but two or three people and my my therapist and just so many people over the years – I've I've let go because I, I couldn't keep in touch. I just didn't have the the energy. And I, I remember people saying, I, "You never called me back. I never heard from you." And I and I say, "Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't f- feeling well." So it's been great to reconnect with so many people, and also over the past two years to sort of re relive certain things because one one of the things that's so frustrating is you don't enjoy things that you used to yeah. enjoy and and so for for me I used to love playing basketball and then it became too much of a of a hassle for me to to get to the court and then I would be disappointed in my so performance just because you couldn't get out of bed and yeah I wasn't yourself. getting out of bed and then I, I would I would think I'm just gonna miss a whole bunch of shots and feel lousy about that and 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 now I, I, I play so frequently and I watch it and I, I just it's like rediscovering that this thing that I had I, I had forgotten brought me so much joy like like pure joy can I be really granular about about oh, yeah. this? I, I I know I think enough to understand like how addiction works and how it thrives on shame and secrecy we say like you're only as sick as the secrets you keep is depression like that as well the more you keep it from people the worse it gets i think there are so many analogous aspects of depression too and i've found over the years that that a lot of the tenets and and philosophies in in aa and 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 na are applicable to to depression like one that i i remember my i used to go to a lot of meetings with a with a friend cool. and one thing that people would always say was compare and despair mm-hmm. and that's all show that, business that's is instagram yes yeah. yes yeah. and and so that's something i i had to take into account and also Which is also just to to pause there for a second that's so fascinating because you know, a lot of people probably were comparing themselves to you for a long time, not even knowing what was actually going right. on. So a lot of yeah. times we're comparing ourselves to things that don't even exist. Oh, I know. Because people know. are putting out a false version of themselves. So a lot of times we're, you know, comparing ourselves to a hallucination anyway. I know, but I, I still have to catch myself. Yeah. Even even now when I, when I think of somebody, you see somebody who you think is so great and you're yeah. like, well, I need to work harder. Yeah. And then I realize that may be true, but it is not the answer to me feeling better about myself. You said something somewhere, I don't know where it was, where Chris Rock said to, you were sort of, I, w- I won't put words in your mouth. Oh yeah, uh, comparing yourself to someone else's career. And oh, this was with Burt Kreischer. Yes, yes. And it really hit me because I think it's it's. I always am trying to find the balance between healthy competition and going right. and healthy motivation of going. Okay, this person got this thing. I can get that thing too. Yeah, you know, I need a little bit of that. Right. Um, sure. It's just part of how I function. I'm not saying it's healthy, but it's just. No, I, it's fine, and it's human nature. Hundred percent. Yeah. And. Uh, and compare and despair and an unhealthy obsession with someone else's success (laughs) or, you know, just a lot of times I'll be like, well, that person got that. I need to get it too. And I don't even want it. Why am I I why am I trying to get, check that box just because someone else did, I know. you know, I know. Um, I don't even want that thing. I don't want to do cruises. Why am I doing, (laughs) why am I forcing myself to do things just because someone else is, is doing it? Um, but what was it, the Chris Rock, if you want to become that, you will become that? Well, he, yeah, he was talking about this comedian who you'd, you'd 
you'll laugh when I tell you who it is afterwards, but Kreischer and I were talking about him and we just, we really just wanted to get feature work on the road. Right, right, right. Which for those who don't know, that's when you open for a yeah, yeah, yeah. comedian. Yeah, and Chris Rock said, if you want to be that guy, that's who you'll be. If you want feature <laughs> work, you'll get feature work and that's and that's the, the highest you'll climb. And, yeah, and, if you're going to yeah. compare yourself to someone yeah. or... Be- try to become someone's at least strive yeah. high. Yes, yes, it was great. It was great advice. It seems so obvious now, but <laughs> and but, it was yeah. carrot top. <laughs> like if you're gonna manifest or the secret or whatever, right. at least yeah. So I remember the first time I, I um, did like a vision board when I moved to Los Angeles. I, I believe in the vision board, by oh, the way. I think that I also though think it's almost uncanny. So a vision board is something you put images that you want to achieve on a board, but I also think the type of person who takes time. To make a vision board is also yeah. the type of person who's who works doing hard the in their wor- comedy. Yes, it's a great point. It's not yes. like someone just does it and yes. never writes a joke. And yes, then you that's get a so mansion. that's so true. You know, it's like the kind of the thing- act of collage. <laughs> the person that, cutting out. It's not so much. That's what they will find out years and later. It's not the visions. It's the collaging. It was collaging the is the is the the decoupage. <laughs> the person who's getting yes, the yes. rubber cement and the yes. doing the thing. Yes, doesn't the glue have stick any friends. And the, and the glue gun. Yes. That's all the time in the world yes. to do the work. Yes, you know it's not yes. magic. It's the same thing with like right. I have this theory about taking vitamins. Like vitamins might not be what's making you healthy, but the type of person that goes out and takes the vitamin every day that is really insightful. Probably it's already so has true. that. Yes, you know? the statisticians would say, "Yeah, it's, you can't tell from this because there's, <laughs> this is yeah, a flawed there's, sample. there's a type of nerd." Yes, who does. you're yeah. already type A. So I'm a little bit, you know, right. but um, vision boards. Like I remember when I first, I was scared to aim too high. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Board. And yeah, because I, somebody could see it and think you're crazy. Oh, I had guys find my vision board. <laughs> I had a guy find my vision board in my closet, and I remember because it I had put glitter on it or some I'm like I had really gone for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, what's all this glitter? And he opened a closet, and my vision board fell out. It was like me next oh. to Will Smith. <laughs> wow. It's like the Tonight Show. I mean, most yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The Tonight yeah, Show. Yeah, I had with Conan and Letterman. They and, do. Yes, uh, yes. Leno. And then I had, but there was something that was so funny that was actually – beneath me like at the time that I had put I revealed how my first one how low my self esteem was. Right. Good nights in Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> Rooster tea feathers. <laughs> yes. The chuckle Flappers. factory. Yeah, yes. Totally. <laughs> I was just sort of like, no, I think the issue here is not manifesting, it's just my self esteem in general. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The reasonable vision board. <laughs> <laughs> the achievable one. Yes. This will happen within two months. Yes. <laughs> but I do think it is important to to. Uh, um, I was reading about how uh, how we can quantify happiness, and one of the main things they can prove is that achieving goals, yeah, is a big one. Like even yeah. in a small way. Like my thing was like, I'm gonna go to the gym, and I'm just gonna like do whatever hits me. I thought that was progress because my stuff is crippling perfectionism and control and so i was like you know what i'm just gonna start going to the gym and whatever happens happens yeah. i'm just gonna be flexible i'm gonna right. be spontaneous i'm gonna feel it yes. out but then you leave being like i'm not clear on what setting vague goals totally is really bad no i totally agree with that you don't yes. get dopamine out of it yes. so you got i now i'm like i used to make fun of the people at the gym that had their little notebooks the dorks oh, they're, no <laughs> they're doing the right thing that's right because yeah. now i'm like i'm new 50 of these 50 of these 50 of these and then i yes. can leave and be clear yes. that i've achieved my goal and feel pride and esteem no totally yeah I, I love small thing and i love keeping track keeping track yes do you mean like journaling or well you- i i have this goodreads app mm-hmm. and it's fun to finish a book but it's much more fun to put it into the goodreads and review it and and put a number of stars next to it i i just i just feel like like a, a sense scholar of completion? yes whoa yes they like want to know my opinion on the book yeah I really, I really love the Goodreads app, and I have this run keeper so that that keeps all my stats for my running. And even when I play basketball, it'll keep my heart rate and Does that things not like get, that. I would get addictive to that step thing. Oh, I don't count the steps. Oh, okay. it's just, it's just, I, I'm a streak guy, so I, I want to do it five or six times a, a week, and, uh-huh. and yeah, and keep that going. So, yeah, I found, I find that very helpful. It keeps me accountable, and also makes me proud that, I, yeah. Our brains need proof. Yes. Right. Because yeah. left to my own devices, when I do something, I'll go, I sucked at that. That was shitty. That was awful. Right. 
But then I can look at the proof and go, oh, no, I did 50 of those squats or I did 50. Okay, I can't argue with this evidence. I mean, like, I'm the person that every time I go on stage, I'm like, I just bombed. That was horrible. Right. And I play it back and I'm like, oh. Yeah, that was weird. No, I know <laughs> that went much better than I thought. I will I know. default to. Which, I've yeah, which I think is part of the reason we're good comedians, right? You know, I have bomb years. I always think I'm bombing. Yeah, and it makes me work harder. Yeah, and I think it's like trying to find a balance between that, a healthy delusion that makes you work harder and one that is sabotaging. Yeah, the Br- Bruce Springsteen. You think you have to th- said you you have to think you are that you suck and that you are a badass simultaneously. <laughs> I and, love and that. And that's why he's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. But there was a point where he couldn't get out of bed in the morning and he takes antidepressants. So, yeah. That was the that was the eye opener to me was because you definitely have this where you thought if I achieve and work hard, then I will feel good about myself. Mm-hmm. And then when I found out that it didn't work for Springsteen, who worked harder than everybody and achieved more than almost everybody, but maybe Dylan, yeah. maybe, and he was unhappy, it's not. That's when you realize it's, yeah, you that can't it's chemistry. Get, yeah, yeah, you cannot get internal needs met yeah. with external things. It's yes. not stuff. Yes. It is not stuff. No. I would love to talk about antidepressants. Um, okay. Because. Uh, you know, I think we still don't totally know the neurochemistry of what causes depression. Right. Right. I yeah. mean, it's 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 wild how little we actually know about the brain. Right. I think we do know that um, your dopamine receptors might not be receiving dopamine the same way. It could also be genetic. That's not 100 percent yet. But right. yeah. that's something I learned with um, eating disorders and some depression in my family and migraines. Learning that something's genetic, there's a little bit of a like, okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> I didn't make this up. Yeah. This, you know, I'm not victimizing myself. I'm not mm-hmm. like trying to get attention. Right. And this is a biological thing and I didn't fail. Right. Right? Yeah. Especially with addiction where you're like, okay, this train left the station like six generations ago. Right. <laughs> like yeah. my answers, my ancestors were wasted all the time. The epigenetics of what happens, like this is the first generation where we really have any concept right. of tools or yeah. are seeking to fix any of this. I know. This is just like how it was. Yeah. They might not have called it depression. Right. But my ancestors who were in coal mines, like probably yeah, had this. They just didn't no, know what to course. call it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love what you said in your special. Uh, it was, what was it? Man up and what do you have to be depressed about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were your yeah. tools growing up. Yeah. And suck it up. That suck was it up. A good one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And what do you yeah. have to be depressed about? Yeah. People think that it like has to do with what you oh, I know. have. I know. In some way. I know. So a lot of people asked um, on Instagram to, um, is what you're on an SSRI and can you help us understand that is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor? I always get that wrong. Yeah. One of them is the Cymbalta that I take is a, is an SSRI and I've had good, had good success with those over the, mm-hmm. over the years. And I, I guess it's, it, it keeps you from losing more serotonin than you're losing or something like that. I don't, I can't remember the, the actual chemistry behind it, but I know it's, it's, been very helpful and i i asked my my doctor i said why do you think this combination has worked and, and the other thing i take is is remeron and he said because it all these things attack various things that may be the cause of yeah your, of your depression we're, you're so a guinea pig a, yeah, we're all just yeah we're it's all a, just... it's a suspenders and belt type of a, approach to the but something i love so much about you know how you talked about this publicly is it's like you know, you're attacking it from a chemical and behavioral person. You're not just going, I'm taking antidepressant and right. that's all I yeah. have to do. My no. work here is done. No, it just got me to a level where I was. Now I can go do yes. daily work. Yes, I need- exactly. It seems like you really uh, do well with routine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And that's why traveling is so hard. Yeah. You lose your routine. But yeah, I'm really good at, at routine. And if it's broken, I, I get anxious. Yeah. Um, I did go on antidepressants. It, it, for me, it's, I think it, it, it is really hard to delineate when you're in, you know, your addictive brain, codependent brain, which is what I am in recovery with, um, eating disorder stuff, depression. It's easy to kind of like conflate all those. And it took oh, me a yeah, long time to go. Yeah. I can be depressed sometimes. I can be sad, but that doesn't mean I have clinical depression. Right. You know, having. Oh, yeah, like, of course. Yeah. Sometimes it's a victory yeah. to be able to say, oh, I actually don't have clinical depression. Right. I have these things. Right. Um, 
Um, and but I was, and I have such bad insomnia oh. that for the for the longest time I was yeah. just exhausted. Of course, I had adrenal fatigue, and I was a walking zombie, and I didn't take care of myself, and I didn't eat well, and I was in all these bad relationships. You know, in to yeah. fa- first you gotta like you can't just go like. I'm in this toxic relationship. I'm in this terrible job. I'm making these terrible decisions. I drink every night. Oh, but I must have depression. It's like, well, you have right. to just yeah, isolate yeah, yeah. them all. Yes. But I was on, um, I did take, um, what was the, what What was the uh, antidepressant that was, I was on? Well, Butrin? No. Zoloft? No. Um, Prozac? No. Lamictal? No. Um, Lex- Lexapro? <laughs> yes, I okay. took Lexapro. Okay. I took Lexapro. <laughs> I've taken all those, by the way. <laughs> I love that Reddit yeah. special. It's so genius. Oh, thanks. And uh, and I was on Lexapro for a while because, and I was on Trazodone for a minute. Okay. Which, because the side effect of Trazodone, I think, is drowsiness. So I was taking that for yeah. sleep for a little bit because right. they were like, look, literally anything's better than Ambien. Yeah. I was waking up to like, I mean, like cans open that I had like eaten jelly out of my hands wow. in the middle of the night this shit that was going on wow and so i took trazodone i took lexapro and something i wish they had told me was that going off it is a whole thing yeah i tried to go off of it yeah. cold turkey yeah that's no joke it was yeah. brutal yeah that's why i feel bad for people who have no choice but to they run out of money oh gosh heartbreaking oh my gosh it's tragic because yeah. I was getting those little fingers. It's dangerous. Out. I was I was literally getting little fingers. Yes. Out and um, my eyes were throbbing, but I was getting these little zaps at the end of my. Oh fingers. yeah, 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 yeah. When you go off it, you just yeah. really have to be careful. Yeah. They said you have to do like a half a pill, then a whole pill, then a half a pill, then a whole pill for like a couple months. No one told yeah. me that, and I was just yeah. electrocuting myself. Oh my gosh. <sighs> you know. Poor thing. Um, but uh, but I just I don't I think that there's so much shame around talking about it for most people that you don't even think to go like yeah. ask questions. No, I know, I know. You just uh, oh. And I think for women, there's a there's if you go in and you're basically like, hey, I have headaches. They're like, here's an antidepressant. And you're like, wait, hold yeah. on, can we? <laughs> right. Too many people are getting it from there. I know. Yes. yes. I had a yes. gynecologist who um, prescribed yeah. me antidepressants. They're like, you're a woman. I just assume you're depressed. <laughs> you must be have it's depression. Ridiculous. You know, so for me, one of my big victories is going like, no, these are the things I have. Right. I don't want to over pathologize myself yeah. or mispathologize myself. Yeah. Um, and really understanding, you know, kind of what it is. So for someone who is trying to understand if this is a condition they have or not, like what are the main things they should look at? Because I, I think it's important to remember that like being sad, that's human. Sure. That's a healthy emotion right. sometimes. It's yeah. if you if it doesn't stop. Yeah. That's right. If it doesn't stop if it lasts for for twelve weeks, maybe even eight weeks, mm-hmm. depending on the level. If you had a bad and, and day, also, right. that's human. You know, I think that yeah. you know, we say in uh, in program like alcoholics are the only people that think they should be having fun all the time. Right. And we're kinda like that now. Yeah. We're like, well, I should always be happy. It's like Well, I'm 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 not an addictive personality really but i but i do crave the excitement and and when when you have a big project that comes out it's so exciting mm-hmm. and your your adrenaline is going and you're promoting and everybody is so excited for you and then the postpartum comes out depression and there's postpartum and, and luckily not- i had some people who recognized or had gone through that tell me yeah you don't want to have to be like that all the time because mm-hmm. there's part of you on the next day well i gotta work on the next thing so that i can get this feeling again and and my my friends who have been through that said it's it's you can't win the It'll reason never, it's so yeah. special is because it doesn't happen exactly all the time. exactly and if you need that all the time good luck to you yeah that's a tough one and that's that's something that's yeah. really helped me understand like no i i don't does like I'm entitled to always being happy all the time. Right. Sometimes you're going to be sad. You're going to have a bad day. You're right. going to be frustrated. Those are yes. all healthy feelings. And yes. sometimes what we need to do is learn to tolerate the feelings of discomfort, not right. anesthetize that. Right. But the other thing, in the, and I said this earlier, was not enjoying things that you really used to enjoy. Ooh. You don't. You don't have to live without the things that that brought you happiness and, mm-hmm. and joy, especially if they're things that aren't that exciting, but that you looked forward to doing. Like I couldn't read for two years. I couldn't. Constantly Concentrate, and then when I did read, I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't get anything out of it, and and was it like a numbness, or was yeah, it yeah? There was a there was a numbness. Things that I used to love to do, and people that I loved to be around. I just I wanted to be alone, and 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 so so that's another 
symptom and then either too much sleep, which was my case, mm. where I'd get 14 hours and it wouldn't be enough. Because I think a lot of people... Or you can't think... sleep. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then there's anxiety, which is a lot of times coupled with, with depression where mm-hmm. you, you, can't, you can't get out of your head and you have thoughts of doom and gloom. And, and, and then, there, then there are these suicidal ideations. And I mean, that, I didn't always have that, mm-hmm. but by 2015, that was, that was in my head all the time. I was, I was Googling. I was, yeah. I was so interested in a painless way. And then you always are told growing up, never leave the garage door closed when you start up your car. And all I could think was when I would go to my mother's house, this is such a great garage for filling with carbon monoxide. And then later I read that that doesn't work anymore, that they've taken something out of the, out of the, the car that doesn't make it possible for you to really? kill yourself in your garage. I don't know if that's, that's true or maybe they just tell you that to, to dissuade you, but... Yeah, so that you was, were going through possible yeah, scenarios. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't do anything involving pain or or jumping out. Like one time when I lived in LA, I stood on my I stood on my windowsill and then I I luckily realized you're going to regret it about You're gonna injure yourself a bad. nanosecond into the jump and then you're still gonna be going. And so I came back in the in the apartment, but yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I've had these feelings for so long, but they, they hit a, a, and yeah. when you would think of those things, would you go, Oh, don't do that. Was there like, it was it like a dual two voices or it was like, Nope, that's still a good <laughs> for idea. For a lot of time there was a dual voice. And then, like I said, in 2015, 2016, it became a, well, we'll just, we're biding our time now. But then there would be something that would. I would try that would make me think that like the ketamine, I tried that. I thought maybe this will be the case. And then the ECT, maybe this will be in that. And that was really, the ECT was really helpful. So my, my, my wife was, was very optimistic and always looking for things and sending me links to new ideas and and new stories. And she grew mushrooms in our, in our our apartment. Yeah. And, and I didn't take them because I, I, I was afraid that it would make things worse. That's the other thing. You get to a point where you're like, it's, and it's how also can funny it get when you're like, yeah. I thought suicide was a good idea, but I can't eat those mushrooms. Yes, right? <laughs> like, yeah. It was, um, you know, I had a. But you're not in your right mind. You no, have yeah. have these bizarre thoughts. Yeah. We're, that are illogical. And um, some people were asking, and this, I thought this was a good question about when you have this condition and you enter in a relationship with someone, when do you share it with them? And how much do you share? I share immediately or shared immediately. Yeah. Like within, like I want you to, as soon as, as soon as the person I could tell was interested in me, I would say, listen, I have had some really dark periods in my life. I feel fine enough now I'm dating and, and I feel hopeful, but I can tell you that it gets really bad. And it was, it was, it was something that I started doing in my in my early thirties because I, I just I thought it was it would be cruel for somebody to find out about this two or three months in yeah. and then think that they'd been been misled and they were all fine with it and nobody I've never had somebody leave me because they couldn't tolerate it or anything like that but I I will say that I I begged. Shade, my my wife, to to leave me. I was like, you save yourself, kid. Get out. <laughs> Get out while you still can. I'll bring you down. Sorry, the garage door's closed. And, get out. And, Let me open yeah. the door. <laughs> like, we can get the door open. Sorry. Yeah. And and she's stuck by me. So I'm I'm really I'm really happy that I've been able to reward her her patience with, with two solid years of, of I would ask her, I said, Why have you stayed? And she said, Well, the first six months were very strong, so I I I hope that you'll be able to return there someday. But yeah, it was crazy. And then, so how much do you share this? Well, I mean, no, now obviously you're yeah. a public figure and you've been sharing it, but like, have you ever been in a situation in a friendship where you shared it and the person either didn't understand or wasn't supportive or didn't make you feel okay about it? And then you realize the friendship was no longer. I asked because when I started going to meetings, I did have a couple friends that were like, ugh, like you and your meetings. Like right. it was just kind yeah. of a, you know, they say when you get healthy, the sick get angry. Wow. Yeah, that's so true. It kind of holds up a mirror and people then have yeah. to look at themselves and they don't like it. That might just be yeah. my case. But I noticed a couple no, of people like didn't want me to get better. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that 
I don't, I don't know that I left any friends, but there were certain friends where I knew. Yeah, I, I mean, can't, me, we didn't speak for well, you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't bring this up with this person because they give me trite yeah. responses, and and so I had this one friend who who would would quote Shawshank Redemption to the get busy living or get busy dying type thing, and I said, I wish it were, I wish it were that that just throwing easy. platitudes. At yeah, you. <laughs> these just really soft platitudes that really weren't weren't helpful, and so I you know I you got to slap your knee twice yeah. in order to think once. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I would I would have to keep my my feelings from from them. I don't think anybody can understand it who hasn't been through it or been near it Mm -hmm. so it's it's very very hard to explain to somebody and they they don't really understand there are people who are actually in it who don't understand that this is that this is just not their their character flaw or their laziness or or things like that they they think this is how everybody lives i've had people Mm -hmm. message me and saying well the idea that you're not going to feel good about yourself until you do something great that's just being human and it's not there are people with much it's also someone telling you yeah. you've never done anything great <laughs> like well i'm pretty special <laughs> i know <laughs> i know i wrote 45 minutes about sugar cookies <laughs> right yeah what is wrong with these people yeah they're, yeah they're just adding to my insecurities <laughs> all right yeah. i'm throwing to break something i never do third love uses the measurements of millions of boobs to design the bras all day for comfort and support um, remember when we were getting a third love bra for me to try and you asked me my bra size? Yes. And I said, <laughs> what do you... Th- four weeks to respond to the message. <laughs> I do remember. Um, it's called leverage. Uh, and then remember I said, what do you think my bra size is? And I said a 38D. <laughs> Which is just a wild guess. What is that based on? Um, proportions, <clears throat> uh, hopes, um, uh, yeah, mostly those two things. <laughs> Studying my body. <laughs> yeah. Lots of gazing. I finally gave you the right size after you guessed incorrectly about 15 Which times. Which was? 30. Well, it does vacillate. Oh, no one knows. It's a secret. Guys. Yeah. It's my, it's all, it's all, it's a, it's constantly uh, fluctuating. <laughs> but right now I'm a 34C, basically. Uh, I have a hard time finding bras. I love this one, which is why we said yes to doing this ad sponsorship. Um, and they'll give you the perfect size bra. They're soft. not the, I mean, the bra. Your boobs, hopefully, too. Um, fits perfectly. Doesn't pull. Doesn't squish my boobs. Doesn't misshape them. Doesn't cut into my shoulder. Good clasp. Yeah, and that's because of the quiz they give you. You just answer those few simple questions to find your size based on what your breast size, the shape, and the fit issues you have. Oh, and then hands down, I believe this is the most comfortable bra he'll ever own. Yeah, I love mine. <laughs> Third love. I think we need to see. I, I don't. We've lost our place. It's but hands down the most comfortable bra you're on. Do, do we have a code? I don't need copy. I like this brand. I endorse this brand. Third love, these are badass bras. They work. I Sometimes your boobs are j- jiggling around. Not in these. Doesn't mush them. Yeah, my boobs haven't moved in weeks. <laughs> Third squish love squish them. And they have the cups are, um, what's that stuff? Memory foam. So it remembers what your boob was. So you don't have to start from scratch every time you put your bra on. Yeah, if you stay over at someone's house, you make a great pillow. Take them right <laughs> off. Third love donates all of their gently used return bras to women in need, supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. That's freaking awesome. Uh, so far, Third Love has donated, oh, wow, $15 million in bras. Third Love knows it's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners, Whitney's listeners, 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash Whitney now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash Whitney for 15% off today. Get that burzier. Yeah, oh, I got my Rothy's. I ordered those. Wait, I wanted to wear them for this ad. Fuck. They're so cute. They're they're black. Thank and, you. And did you just pick I them out? I picked them out. They're so cute. They ha- they're like little um ankle. They're they go up around the ankles. Yeah. So you don't see my ugly ass socks. I'm very into this. Rothy's stylish shoes for women and girls out of recycled plastic water bottles. That just makes me so happy. Crazy comfortable, fully machine washable. Which is so after a bonus. I step in horse crap, I can just throw them in the in the washing machine. Uh, quickly grown to the most loved, gotta have them brand. It's so funny because I saw everyone wearing these, and now I, I understand what's going on. Uh, they have a thousand nearly perfect reviews. Wow, they're stylish, sustainable, comfortable, washable. Re- Me, 
you in a shoe. Uh, perfect uh, flats for life on the go. Uh, super cute. They have all kinds of colors, prints, patterns. What were the, my other yeah, options? Yeah, they had, I mean, they have pointed toe flats, round toed flats. They yeah, have cute. like loafers. They have like yeah. little sneakers. A lot of like celebrities wear these. They, they were really nice. They have like tons of patterns and colors. Yeah. Like neutrals and then everything from like, um, like, Animal prints to Ooh, like why you Aztec you prints. Why did you get me black? I almost got you like the southwestern printed ones, but then I could just see you being like, oh, I'm going to wear this with my animal shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pattern. I uh, love it so much. Another major, uh, major bonus is they're fully machine washable, as I said. Um, I don't know how to use my washing machine, but when I figure it out, can't wait to wash my shoes. Uh, they own and operate their manufacturing workshop where they pr prioritize sustainability every step of the way. Thank God. Brothies, Brothies own, own and, and operate, operate their, their manufacturing, manufacturing workshop. Where where they prioritize <laughs> sustainability every step of the way. Plus, Rothy's ship directly in their shoebox. I love this. There's no unnecessary packaging. Every time you order through something now, you feel like you're just, like, killing the environment. Feel good flats in more ways than one. You'll quickly discover why BuzzFeed called them their forever shoes. This is a very good Valentine's Day yeah, gift. Yeah, it is a good Valentine's Day it's gift. It's a very good Valentine's Day gift. Check out all the amazing styles available right now on rothys.com slash Whitney. Go to rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S.com. You guys know how to do this. Slash Whitney. Get your new favorite flats. Comfort, style, and sustainability. These are the shoes you've been waiting for. Rothys.com slash Whitney. I got the black uh, ankle ones. The high tops. Yep. I'm curious if it gets frustrating to see other people in a state you might have been in or when you see, like, do you feel like, like when I see someone that's struggling with addiction or codependence or eating disorders, I want so badly to pull them aside and be like, read this book and do this and do this. But yeah, it's usually like, no, I they're know. not ready till they're ready. Right. I, I mean, my, my Sade says that to me a lot. She says, you're angry at that person because they're not you. <gasps> yeah. They're not, they're not applying themselves and they're, they're not able to be disciplined about their treatment. Like, like, you are and they're impatient or whatever it was that got you through it and I, and I said you're you're absolutely I know I expect right. people to fix themselves overnight when it took me 10 years right <laughs> like, yes. what's your problem yes just do everything I did why would you not do everything why would you want to be I me did? yeah I know <laughs> I know. Drop everything. Right. Or or I want to shake certain comedians and say, why do you, why do I want you to be a better comedian than you want to be? Oh my god. Why <laughs> but it's it's not my life. Here, it's, take this tag. Yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> yes. It's so Stop it, fucking the stool. Right. Stop fucking the stool. <laughs> Just stop fucking the stool. Yes. That's all I ask. Oh I know. I know. Stop laughing at your own jokes. <laughs> you know I know what you're doing. Stop banging yourself with the mic. <laughs> oh my gosh. The yes, the Chappelle. Yeah, he yeah. Can, well, he's Chappelle. Right, he invented it. He but, did it. But yeah, but it's contagious to all these other guys. Because when you do yeah. it, it's just a Pavlovian response. Right, you yes. thought, I'm laughing at Chappelle having done it a year right. ago. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, the slapping of the thigh with the microphone, yes. yes. Hold the mic lower. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your hand on it? <laughs> like I, Oh, I know, I know. But then I go, okay, what are people saying about me? I'm sure people have their notes for me. Oh, gosh. I, I, I just... I. If the audience, the actual audience, was as abusive towards my act as I am, I would, yeah. But that's because I listen and I watch, and I'm like, ugh, I can find so many flaws in everything. But that's why I think you are thought of as sort of the quintessential joke writer. Sorry, I put a wow. sort of in front of that. Well, that's nice. Because <laughs> you are so surgical, like there is not an ounce of fat. Oh, well, thank joke. you. But all, all I hear is fat. And the other That's thing why is, you have no fat. I need to, I need to, I've accumulated a few people whose opinion I trust, like their taste, I trust. Ooh. And, and because otherwise, and you talked about perfectionism, where you need that person, I need that person to say, it's, it's good. And then I'm saying, all right. Take it from there because otherwise I would never release anything. It's it's and these people yeah. have said before, it's yeah, not good enough. They, they'll say in a very gentle way, basically, yeah, you don't need that, yeah. Or if That's or really if interesting. yeah, yeah, like the director on this. If you ever have an opportunity to work with Mike Bonfiglio, sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> he feedback. Well, it wasn't so much the feedback as he listened to every every set that I did for mm -hmm. a year on the road. Any any. 
he knew where he wanted the documentary stuff to go, so he helped me design the the story of the of the show, and it and it, it brought a narrative aspect to my to my comedy shows that that I never had, that I yeah. never never bothered or 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 really felt I I I was capable of of putting that in there, and I think that's the. I think that may be the way that all stand-up specials are going now, where where the, to keep it all in in on theme. Like you do that already, but I had never really done that. I just put together six or seven really solid jokes and then and then put out a special. But I truly did that by accident this time because I I, I realized like so much of writing is just picking a premise yes. that you're going to be interested in for a year. Right. We can all write three jokes on yeah. Facebook and yeah, yeah, yeah. Co- coffee. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But I picked one premise and it didn't seem like anyone was really talking about it. Exactly. And I feel like there's so many people doing comedy and so many, and I was just, yeah. I really was just so afraid of doing something similar to someone right? else yeah. that I was just like, all right, no one's talking about this. Let yes. me just talk about this for four yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah. That's the secret. And then, and then I go to the comedy store for like three months straight so everyone sees I'm talking about it so no one ever thinks like I I start because my biggest fear is doing something too similar to another comedian then a special comes out and it looks because most people don't know when you shot something and they just go oh you have a similar joke to that person and that's my living nightmare yeah it's not like laws with precedents and cases (laughs) totally yeah like because a lot of times people go you have a similar joke to that person i'm like well mine was shot 10 years ago right (laughs) yeah look at the date on the thing but i get so i would just love to say yes i stole it (laughs) i stole it from them it's better it's It's better right yeah, I mean, I, I I wrote it down word for word, but then I feel like I added some <laughs> some things to it, so I think it's a little bit better. Is Trim better? some of the fat. It's better. <laughs> there was a yeah. comic who I don't think is really in comedy anymore, and you're about to hear why. He would say, um, I remember one time going, "Oh, you and so and so had like a really similar," which I don't do anymore. I just I used to be the person that was like, "Let me help everyone with everything, and let me be yeah. the messenger who's always because I'd want someone right. to tell me." Yeah, and then I'd always end up backfiring, and I was like, "Oh, so and so has a similar thing. I just don't want yeah. you to just meddling in business oh, that wasn't exhausting. mine in the hallway." Oh my god, yeah. nightmare! <laughs> I'm like, "Let me get in some drama for no reason. Let me get between two comedians' egos. That's a good idea <sighs> at midnight on Tuesday." <laughs> and uh, I was like, "You guys have a similar thing," and he went, "Uh, well, let's see who gets it on TV first. Wow, <laughs> I was bone chilling. Wow, chills down my spine. But that that I do think right now." is it's not so much about like that it's like well a, t- uh, a talk show host might do it or twitter right. might do it or someone might tweet it or but like there's yeah. so many ways to there might be a meme about this right. like i do feel a sense of rushing yeah. now yeah do you feel that stress of like no thank goodness <laughs> yeah but i, like, I'm but, I I've, but i've been that yeah, I've i've been that way for a long time and it's just it's it's a house of cards man totally because it, the one, it, you're oh, everything's based on getting this joke out there, and and <laughs> it's not, yeah. It's, I want to be the fast food of comedy, right? Yeah, and and so, yeah, there would there would be certain things that I had to drop over the years because somebody came out with something similar on TV, and mm-hmm. it's just and and you, I always. <sighs> knew that the more famous person was going to get the credit for yeah. the for the for the the joke I mean, that 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 would be the bottom line so well, what am i going to do it's also i feel like people are always like how come you tour so much like how come you do so? and it's like well, no the idea of a special is you do it for 9 months yeah make sure it works in every city yes. right and you yeah. then you shoot it yeah. people are shooting specials after a month and you're just like no you gotta right go work it out and find the pacing and find the definitely no i agree i agree with that that's that's i mean that that was the the sort of silver lining to getting a a special every four years rather than every year was that was that i was that i was able to work on these things for a for a long time and and in this case i i also had a long time in between when i finished writing it and when and when it aired so i had time to work on this this new this new tour Mm -hmm. and then also people you know and i'll be prepared i don't think understand how um sort of bittersweet putting a special is out because the second it comes out you have to have a new hour yeah yeah and it's really annoying (laughs) no it's the most annoying yeah and and i i think 
there was everything contributing to my to my depression but part of it was putting on a special and not immediately having inspiration to, chaos yeah it is complete chaos yeah and, it, and i had scramble. forgotten how i got to that last one i was like well how did i write this hour before and and there's also this feeling well maybe i'm one of those guys who never wrote again after he was 45 and mm-hmm. yeah it was yeah how and, was ronnie dangerfield when he started oh i don't i don't know but he stopped for a long time and then in his 50s i mean i started always, up again yeah i always think about that I think about Rodney Dangerfield all yeah, the time. And I, I, I also idolize Larry David's career path where he was just a writer yes. and now he's like an icon. Yeah. And I remember Gary Shandling said to me, I, I didn't know him very well. Um, I was a fan, obviously. And I found myself like in a room with him once. At Comedy Magic? It was not at Comedy Magic. It was okay. at a... a um, David Lynch, the meditation, oh, the yeah. director. Right. It was like a um, show, okay. like a charity show, and right. like in the green room or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we had to follow Jay Leno, which was impossible. <laughs> I don't think people understand how hard Jay Leno kills yeah. when he does stand up. Yeah. It was, the building was shaking. Yeah. He was the first stand up I ever saw live. My dad and I, when really? I was 16, went to see him at this theater in. in on the North Shore of Massachusetts, and my dad was in his early 60s. I was 16, and he killed both of us. We were dying. Dude, like hardened hipster yes. comedians who were yes. like, oh, talk shows, whatever, were yep. crying. Yes. He was talking about um the kickstand on a motorcycle. Like, it was the, it was the tiniest premise. Yeah. His yeah, and his stuff from back then holds up. I mean, he was, it was yeah, machine gun yep. killing. Yep. So we were all like, oh, I, like I was stretching. <laughs> I was like, I gotta pull it. Together. Yeah, going over your notes. Totally. I know. Like it was. Like yeah. I was doing that knee stretch. Right. And yeah. anyway, so I was with um, Shanling, and he said something, and I was like furiously writing stuff down. Which, by the way, before a show is is just drivel. Uh, it's not. I'm not right. really writing a joke. Right. I'm just going through the motions no, to delude myself into thinking I'm prepared. <laughs> Um, uh, he looked at me and he just said something that was so crazy. The exact thing I needed to hear at the exact time. He goes, uh, you know, you can never make it too late. Wow. I know. It was, it hit me really hard. And I'm sure if anyone else had said it any other time, I never would have heard it. And it took this weight off. It's the exact thing I needed to hear. Cause I was like, I have until 38. I just had made this story up in my head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on like women in Hollywood and high def television and who Ugh. wants to hear a woman over 40 complaining on stage. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there is a little bit of like you are just a naggy woman oh. <laughs> with a microphone because <laughs> there you really do turn into, I think, maybe not so much now, but my whole career. I remember Kevin Christie, who used to go with me on the road, would say like about 30 minutes into the show, you turn it one man snaps and you turn into their wife. Or their ex, uh, really? or like their the t- nun <laughs> that that beat yeah. them in high school, or something. Really, <laughs> a man would always snap like thirty minutes into one of my shows. Like I remember one time, um, that's I, so interesting. I was in La Jolla. That doesn't really happen anymore, Benton. It's more like women yelling. Yeah, no, that doesn't happen at all. Men really seem to enjoy you, and women throw things at you. That's right. <laughs> really? Gifts and, and that's amazing. Yeah, gifts, compliments, yeah. mace. Yeah, mace. That's a real one. <laughs> Someone threw me pink mace once. Um, I uh, I remember I was in La Jolla, California. Have you been down to that La Jolla Comedy Store? No. It's so great. No, it's legendary. It's though. legendary. It's a, yeah. it was the f- not the first comedy store. I don't know. What do I know? But it's like a box. Okay. It's just so many comedy venues now are like old banks. <laughs> no. And the, just the the yeah. the sound or, does not reverberate yeah. at all. Or D- Dan Soder said that one of the clubs was a uh, closed laser tag. <laughs> it was so it was so big. Dude, they're huge. You yeah. want low ceilings? R- exactly. Low ceilings they and will why? Never understand that. Which is people are yeah. like, why does everyone love the cellar so much? It's that's the way yeah. said. And the comedy connection was like that in yes. boston right yes in faneuil hall yeah it was perfect i remember walking in there yeah. and being like whoa this is a nightmare you have to look at both sides you got to swivel yeah. and then i understood yeah. this is like yeah or the old gotham 
the old Gotham been Comedy the old Club. One. Okay, yeah, that was, I mean, identical to that, that the dimension sort of of the, or the setup of the cellar and the Comedy Connection and Faneuil Hall. Because yeah. I think a lot of people are like, why does everyone love this club so much? Like the conditions, yep. you know, and this is a perfect box and very low ceilings. Wow. And it's just the greatest. It's just like, poof, like when it hits, nothing feels better than that place. Yeah. But anyway, I was doing a joke at the time about like, it was so dumb. It was like about some, like how guys always have like a bowl of coins. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> True. <laughs> By the way, just so you guys know, that's how comedians laugh. They just go, true. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's such a great observation. <laughs> like a jar. Yeah. Or like There's always like yeah. a couple receipts in it, like a couple yeah. paper clips. Yeah, and a ring. <laughs> it's, it's best... Uh, the best example is is Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> like when true. when when Mr. Orange is going out on the on the caper, he goes into that 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 dish and he finds his lucky ring. Oh, that's a brilliant observation. It's always like a like a class ring or a football yeah, ring yeah, or yeah, something, right? Yeah, a piece of hard candy. That's <laughs> yeah. one Werther's original. Yeah. <laughs> Like a couple of random miscellaneous like pina colada candies, yeah, the kinds oh with gosh. the filling. Yeah, a a um, <laughs> fortune from a fortune cookie. <laughs> That's right. There's always a couple international coins, yeah. <laughs> even though you've never traveled abroad. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couple pieces of trash because I think it's guys just empty their pockets. Yes, and was, whatever was in their pockets goes in the jar. Yes, and I'll, I yes. think you one day aspire to taking it to a coin star. Yeah, and that never happens. No, it never happens. So I was doing some joke about that. I don't know what it was. And I was like, so every guy has a jar. And there was this guy in the front row who asked me for tickets. He like had, it was the time I had emailed and we'd get people free tickets and whatever. Wow. That's back when I like thought that was a good idea. Um, Because when people don't pay for tickets, they're always (laughs) act like it's a free show. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) They don't value it because they didn't pay for it. There's no value unless there's value. (laughs) Yeah. So true. Yeah. Like you're worth nothing. Right. Treat you that way. Yeah. So he's in the front row. And he was laughing the whole time. I mean, almost to the point of it being like disruptive, like clapping during, you know, and I'm like, this guy's the best. Like I have the best life. Like what a great, it makes it all worth it. Look how much fun this guy's having. Yeah. This is why we do this. (laughs) The joy on this man's face. And then I'd say 30 minutes in, I'm like, so every guy has a jar full of coins. Right. And he just goes cold and he goes, that's so we can pay for your shit. Jesus. Like he yelled it at me and I was like, I just walked into a landmine. I just walked into a hornet's nest that I would like to carefully extricate myself from. Wow. Snapped. So he had to get kicked out. Yeah. He kept yelling at me. <gasps> he had like an ep went outside and then the way La Jolla's design, there's a big window and he stood outside and just stared at me the rest of the set through the window. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was wild. That's brutal. I used to, I feel like... It's a nightmare. ...walk into people's stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand-up is... Yeah. I don't think people understand how, like, it, it can be very dangerous. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, yeah, and this strange intimacy. Yes. Yeah. And this this level of trust of, right. like, we're, you're all gonna... While you're drinking, maybe on empty stomachs... Yeah. ...letting steam off, we're all just gonna agree that you're gonna be <laughs> sane. Right. Yeah. Did you see the um, Caparulo thing? No. Can you pull up John Caparulo, Hermosa? I like Black. that guy. This is, he's the best. He Although was, I haven't seen him probably in 12 years. No, I haven't seen like him that. in a while. Yeah. He, someone threw a glass at him at Hermosa oh, no. Comedy and Magic. No. Did you see the Andy Dick, the guy that punched Andy Dick in the back of the head? No. Oh, dude. Where was that? Oh, you got to get in my algorithm. Oh. You're in the wrong algorithm. Dude, this is wild. Okay, so a lady yelled, fuck you. Oh, this lady is leaving. She's leaving. She's grabbed her Aldo purse, and she's out of there. Oh, wow. She's grabbing that coat that she got at Art and B. She's <laughs> out. I'm gone. Wait, I, I'm cringing. I can't handle this. This is making me so uncomfortable. Oh, no. I'm already upset. But he doesn't even seem to be shaking. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is still better than all the sets that I had in the 90s. Yeah, seriously. Why doesn't that happen every night? Yeah, that, isn't that, that is, the that bigger is, question? Yeah, that is tr- that is Did we, true. We haven't watched the Andy Dick one, right? This Andy Dick one is so upset. This happened after a show in New Orleans. Someone came up behind Andy Dick and just knocked him out for fifteen minutes. And why did why did Trump come up in that in that she was a Trump supporter? I think or he, he was. He made a pejorative joke about Trump. Okay, and she got upset. Oh, still not a reason to throw a glass no. at a human being, nor disrupt the show, nor disrupt the show. You yeah. can leave if you need to. Yeah, of course. If you need to leave. I that's get that. Fine. I'm not for everyone. <laughs> I was 
thinking about putting that on a shirt. That is my big thing. I'm finally at the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm not for everyone. Yeah. Thank I, God. I don't, I don't have time to change anything more about myself. Right. This yeah. is it. Yeah. This is might be the best yeah. I can do. This is my best version. This is so upsetting. This is a guy who was on stage with him. I'm sorry, who was after he was on stage. <gasps> wow. He was look at him. He was out for fifteen minutes and like grabs his beer, walks away. Oh, that's really upsetting. <laughs> Sorry, am I bumming you out? No, but who punched out Andy Dick? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think a couple of people have, I'm sure. Walks yeah. away. No one knows what to do. That's the most depressing part about it. No one's actually doing anything about it. Yeah. I <laughs> truly love this. I'm obsessed with this. I had peanut butter whiskey by myself the other day. I felt great about Did it. Did you? I was watching Netflix. I saw the peanut butter whiskey because they sent it for the ad. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to indulge myself. And it was a delicious. It is really good. It's a perfect, like, s- sweet buzz. It is. It's like so sweet. It tastes just like peanut butter. I know. It's like, really a, it's like a peanut butter cup. Oh, so delicious. Uh Anyway, that's my. I actual- put some in coffee, like you said. <gasps> that's a good. In the morning, coffee. that explains a lot. <laughs> no, at night, I was like, I'm gonna have a night coffee. Oh, a little nightcap. Now, you could put it in hot chocolate too, though. That'd be good. That's a really good peanut butter hot chocolate. Maybe that's what you actually said, and I just messed. Maybe, it up. yeah. <laughs> Where uh, everything's starting to blur together at this point. Warm, welcoming aroma, deliciously smooth palate. Screwball peanut butter whiskey isn't your average flavored liquor. I've never had another one, but this is the only one I would drink. Uh, made by a local husband and wife duo. Whoa, with American whiskey and peanut butter flavor the end result is savory it's creamy touch of sweetness and without the lingering heavy finish you might expect this is all true um there's a reason why uh it won all the awards the double medal gold medal the olympics of alcohol uh (laughs) i love it screwball original and most awarded peanut butter whiskey is now available nearly everywhere it's 70 proof that explains a lot (laughs) about how the rest of the night went for me (laughs) screwball peanut butter whiskey is the perfect shot for the perfect addition to your favorite cocktail pick it up at your local store ask for it at your favorite bar or restaurant oh my god that's such a good idea Ooh, um, ready to hashtag get screwed yes hashtag get screwed screwballwhiskey.com for more information please drink responsibly advertisement by screwball spirits llc san marcos ca whiskey with natural flavors and caramel color 35 percent alcohol by volume i hope this couple stays together look around here. i didn't get these headphones nope Nope, I got them. Look, <laughs> they think you're 15 of them. They're like, I, yeah, they all are. I got these headphones, and they are awesome. They're awesome because they go right into your ears, which I... <laughs> I'd, Unlike other headphones? Yes, because you know I have this piercing on this ear right here, so I need headphones to go right into my little ear hole, okay? And these headphones did it, so I'm very into them, and that's why we are going to try to sell them to everyone else now. Before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair of headphones, you need to check out wireless earbuds from Raycon. How cool does that sound? Raycon! It sounds like a convention you want to go to. That's correct. You already know Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds. Headphones are ridiculously expensive. Oh, God. Yeah. Raycon's latest model, E25, they're their best one yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing. Uh, more base and more compact design and gives you a nice noise isolating fit. This is true. I can I can attest that that's a correct statement. Uh, Raycon's wireless earbuds, they're so comfortable. They're perfect on the go listening, especially if you have weird piercings in your ear like I do. Um, they go right in. They're cute. They don't and they also don't tangle up right away. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Uh, you've heard me talk about the company uh, uh, being co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Cardi B. Right? Oh yeah, just, if she uses them, we use them. Just because she, she does, she tells no lies. She said, "Oh, cr- <laughs> pick up a pair. See what all the hype is about. Now is the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Fifteen percent off your order at buyraycon.com/whitney. That's buyraycon.com/whitney for fifteen percent off Raycon wireless earbuds that are already affordable. I don't know how they do it, but they did it." By Raycon.com slash Whitney. It's brutal. It's brutal. Oh, you got to keep your head on a swivel now if you go after the, after the show. Oh, that's really upsetting. Isn't that scary? I think, yeah. it's, I, I mean, I remember, you know, Jim Jeffries, my, like, hit, I mean, that was the first real, I think, comic assault that we all kind of knew about. Right. The person that knocked him out on stage. Wow. You know, you yeah. just, it's, you're right there. You're yeah. three feet away right. from a mob of people yeah. who could turn on you at any moment. Yeah, that's, that's true. I always forget that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there is something in everyone that 
a certain phrase with or a, a little look. whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen something like that? Like a dangerous situation? Well, I'm trying to think. I mean, recently at the comedy cellar, I, I got off stage and the guy yelled, you suck. And I mean, I had made such the, the, the lightest Donald Trump insult. It was just, I, I said something about Abraham Lincoln being our best president. And then I, I said, up till now, up till now. <laughs> and, and the guy was very upset that I had, that I had been so um, insulted. I'm like, that's not even a... That's not even a real slam. I didn't call him Hitler. Yeah, that's not even a real slam. Yeah, he said, y- you suck. And I said, what? He says, too political, too political. So that that was recent. And then, and then years ago, a guy threw a drink in my face. <gasps> Yeah. While you were on stage? No, no, no. As I got when I got off stage at the at the comedy improv, I think, and and then I was like, ugh, if somebody throws a drink in your face, I think you have to punch them. Did you punch them? Um no, luckily Gene Pompa did. What? Yeah. I, does anyone yeah. know how to have you ever punched someone before? Uh yeah, and it's not as effective as it looks on television. <laughs> I feel like it's Yeah, when always... I was eight when I was eighteen I got into a, a fist fight and it and it like I was like, I keep hitting this guy and he's still he's still going at me. But it's where do you even how do you know even where to go? Like are men just born with the ability to know how to punch someone? No, I think you have to be taught because I didn't know what, what where to do. do. You, what I are just you remember aiming for? A, a guy who punched me in the face and I was like, Oh boy, I think I have to punch him back. Here we go. Did it hurt? We're doing this. Did it hurt when he punched me? No, because I wasn't expecting it. So I think adrenaline. It just gets like hot or something. Yeah. And then when I woke up the next day, I was like, oh, this is really painful. And I had cuts and abrasions. And and then, yeah. But it it seemed like this guy was was just, there was nothing I could do to really phase him. It was, yeah. It's It's just Boston. It's the, yeah, it's the hardest part about being a guy is that you, you, well, you could also get in a fight as a, as a woman, but it's much more likely as a guy, especially in Boston, that you, you may have to defend yourself with your fists at some point because it's it's not and is that and, legal and, is and it legal to just punch someone in the face yeah it certainly <laughs> is but then but then you would have to go to the police and explain and, it's oh, just, and then you're a pussy and it's also, yes it's also it's also demeaning <laughs> <laughs> this guy punched yeah, me yeah <laughs> yeah they're like yeah and you're and you're, and you're telling me yeah you should keep this to yourself <laughs> <laughs> was boston especially rough to grow up in yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the 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 masculinity thing and the oh, the homophobia so that th- things that were really not sexual at all could be construed as as being being gay just in in interest in in <laughs> hygiene crafts showering crafts <laughs> i remember being averse to i i really i i was i was a, a guy who who liked to draw and 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 make things and and work with clay and then all of a sudden it was like yeah Just, keep you might want to keep that to yourself kid your vision board maybe put yeah. your, <laughs> your little scrapbook yeah so that was something you felt you were discouraged from doing anything artistic yeah, or even oh, my brother, my <laughs> oldest brother had this thing where if I was where where if I I was being sensitive or or like we would we would roughhouse or something like that, and I would I would uh, tell my mother he was thirteen years older than me by the way I would tell my mother and he would be like oh, go read a book you know what I won't even I won't even play with you <laughs> just go read a book oh bud <laughs> yeah but he yeah he do you was, feel like that's was, changing yes. Yes, completely. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think that we might be going too far the other direction. <laughs> maybe, but I'd rather that than than what I grew up with, where you yeah. where you had to just keep a stiff up, upper lip over yeah. really serious things. Like I just remember, I was thinking about this the other day because I'm, I'm I have a book deal, so I'm I'm writing this this book, and I'm thinking about how I handled my first breakup, and I just would not tell anybody that i felt anything about it yeah because i was so embarrassed that i had feelings that i had feelings and that i was sad and and i didn't want and then my my 
family was 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 just like it's enough already it's yeah. been it's been a month move on and and a month <laughs> yeah and it was like and and then so when i had these feelings even the the following year yeah. it was like oh, keep that to yourself you're gonna bum everybody out and and people are gonna are gonna grow tired and impatient with you so yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm glad it's it's swung this way but i mean yeah. i do think it was it's interesting because a lot of my like girlfriends and i talk about this when people talk about like toxic masculinity were you know i i will say and whether the the whether it's a good or bad thing to say i don't know i'm sure i'll get shit for it but you know i have dated a lot of very ostensibly tough men right rowdy men sportsmen <laughs> you yeah. know g- guys that played you know right sports and all that kind of, but in relationships, we see the soft side of men. Right. They, we see it. We're kind of like, what masculinity crisis? Right. He's, Hopefully. When he's sick, he's like cries. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we sort of a lot, you know, of men do feel safer on women, I think, but around each other, not right. so much. But I think a lot of my girlfriends are like, what masculinity crisis? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think that one 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 thing with the with the special that i found very interesting is guys who i never expected to come up to me after the shows or just just old time friends mm-hmm. a friend who was who was like a, a a mentor to us when we were in high school he came up to me and said i i i had to have my wife watch it with me so she would understand why i have these moods oh, and all that's... these things so that was really Amazing. really really special and this was a guy who was a superior athlete and i mm-hmm. think went to either west point or something like wow. like that or or did, played sports in college and and was a leader mm-hmm. and and a mentor to a lot of us and it turns out that he had the the same thing so that's that's something that a, a lot of guys have 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 approached me about and i remember one time being in rochester new york and a guy with a do-rag on who clearly had access to a motorcycle and (laughs) and was was seemed like the toughest guy and he came up to me afterwards and told me about his struggles and i and i thought oh it'll work everywhere which is by the way also i do think we need to capsize our paradigm about it because admitting you have something like this that is actually the bravest most badass oh, yeah. thing you can do yeah. you yeah. know because yeah. it is the scariest thing like it's so interesting that anyone would ever see that as weak because it's actually the t- right you are the toughest person in the room if you say like i have bipolar disorder like that's the biggest badass in the room the bravest thing yeah is getting through that yeah to get through that and and tell about it that that takes a lot of like going play football that's what everyone does that's easy no, oh my you gosh know? yeah uh, you played football yeah. um you said in college and didn't appreciate it. do you do you think football's going to stay around? Oh, I hope not. Don't you think? Yeah, I feel Will complicit. Will we look back in 30 years and be like... I feel complicit like... in a crime every time <laughs> I watch a game. I think, yeah. Are we like, going to look back in 30 years and go, remember when we used to just like make people get concussions yeah. for three hours right, and loved it? Right, right. And, and I hear these guys complaining about the, the celebrations or, yeah. the, or the knee taking. And, and, and I, I think... I, I give these guys a, a a lot of leeway as far as their celebrations go because they're risking our li- their lives for our entertainment. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, let them dance around. Yes. <laughs> I remember watching someone, uh, I was watching the some game over the holiday, I can't tell you which one, um, and all their hair was really long. Oh yeah, I love that. I, and I was like trying to write a joke about it and I was like, yeah. and then I was like, I'm like, why is their hair so long? I'm like, they're dying. Yeah, Let them do what they I want. Know. Exactly. Let them have it. Live exactly. it up. Exactly. You have a couple years yes. left. You can yes. die at any moment. Yes. Yes. They. Yes. And the and the contracts. I have no problem. Yeah. They've got about eight years to earn Take their money. Take all the money. Life. You have yes. all of it. Yes. It is really. Yeah. Um. It is really. It is so barbaric. Why is it so fun to watch? Well. I don't know, but it is. It is. It, the, is. it is. I think modern day Colosseum. Yeah, it's Rome. That's no. That's the great analogy. Yeah, isn't that it, basically it, what we're it watching? It really is. Yes, I love yes. watching it, and then I feel yes. dirty gladiators. afterwards. We're yeah. watching gladiators. Totally. Yeah. But I think if they didn't have helmets on, not only would they not, but I think it'd be harder because you don't see their face. Right. You're just like these are. Yeah. No. Not no. real humans. I know. Yeah. No, it's so true that that helps to not to not feel as much empathy. I know uh, a football player who said, and I was like, oh, my God, have you had more than three concussions? He's like, we oh, yeah, we only count them when we go out. Right. We get them all the time, but you don't want to lose. Yes. Screen time. What do you call it? Stage time. Playing time. <laughs> Playing time. You stage don't... time. Yeah, they call it stage time. <laughs> 
they call it stage time. <laughs> you get a red yeah. light on the field. Yeah. But um, they don't want to say it because they don't want to go off the field. So no, they I get know. concussions. It's yeah. only three that are recorded. Right. That create the CTE, is it called? So they say if you get three concussions, that's when you get CTE. Yeah. They're like, oh, but, we get them all the time. But they, yeah, they also talk about these micro concussions and yeah, it's terrible. And it's also football's gotten better because they've done these drone shots now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, oh, my gosh. The, the camera coverage. It's never been more compelling. Now incredible. I yeah. love it. Yes. They've never been faster. They've never been more athletic and yeah. And, and in rugby is still happening too. Oh, yeah. Rugby is still happening and people still box and, and I, I, I. They say soccer is actually the worst the for concussions. Yeah. Yeah. But then I always think in UFC that, that, they beat each other up, then they hug, and I always say, how about we try, they just hug at first and see if they still want to fight. Still want to do it? Yeah, after that, like, and then they say, it's not your fault. Like, it's goodwill hunting, it's yeah. not your fault, and then they cry in each other's arms. <laughs> Bodies. I mean, that yeah. seems like it's a little, is, uh, well, I guess they don't have the padding on their right. hands, but is UFC, it seems like it's more... You can say no, thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> tapping out. Yes, yes, <laughs> which I appreciate. Yes, I give. I love. Like that. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember yeah. there was a t- when Ronda Rousey, like people would just as soon as it would come close to the armbar, they'd be like, "Damn, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah." Good. Oh my gosh, who could withstand that? Do you think? What do you think is the only thing that's scarier than doing stand up? I think it might be athletics. Yeah, I mean, I losing I've, being a goalie. Right. In soccer. Yeah. That to me seems like a nightmare. Yeah. Or in hockey too. Ooh, there's so yeah. little space. How did that get yeah. there? Yeah. And that thing is so small. I, and you have to see through a mask. It's it's just everything is working against you with all these guys. And then there's this. Because people always say on. like stand up's the scariest thing in the world. And I'm like, I don't know if it no. is. I mean. No, I've done things that I was more nervous about doing and and football was one and also getting into the batter's box against a really fast pitcher when i was in little league this kid i'm like i can't see the ball how am i going to hit it and what if it hits me part of the reason i love stand up so much is you get to control everything yes you can prepare we're going at my pace yeah i don't have to rely on someone else to tell me when yeah if it's not going well i can totally address that right like the conditions we get to set entirely Yes. yes it's a control freak's dream yes and and also you can quit anytime you want. <laughs> you can do your last show at any point. There's no whenever yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. And you and inevitably you're like, oh, I want to go back to it. Um, so great. Last thing I'm going to ask you is, I know you have to okay. go to your nap and get you to your routine. Yes. Um, both of our perfectionisms are. <laughs> I want you here longer, but you have to take care of yourself. Thank you. Um, just can we do like a quick like the things that you know if you've seen the special you'll know a lot of it like the things that have been the most helpful for you just like a little speed round well one one thing was i found this quote by samuel beckett who i've other than i think he wrote waiting for godot Mm -hmm. which i i read and it went i know that and it went right through me i couldn't tell you really what happens it just didn't it didn't adhere to any of my brain cells didn't stick so i don't I don't know what happened in it. I just remember thinking this is way too smart for me. But he had this quote where he said, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. And the fail better sentence is the one that relieved me of all the, the, I better be perfect. And if the joke doesn't work, I'm going to be devastated. I won't be able to, there were days where the show Went fine, except for a new joke, didn't work, and I'd wake up the next day and think, I'm doomed. I'm never going to write another new joke. And then just the acceptance of the amount of failing that I'd have to do, that was was such a relief. You do is everyone should follow Gary on Twitter because you do these sort of advice on writing. Yeah. Well, I ended that on December 31st. I did it 103... uh, 366 tips. That and is. Now I've stopped. So yeah. you can go back. Through yeah, you it. can go back through it. And I think. I think when that, I have writer's yeah. block, I'll just like go through it. And oh yeah, some of them where you're just yeah. like, just write. It doesn't matter right. what it is. Or go through your down. old notebooks. Yes, that was really helpful. You start finding these little yes. gems. Yes, and you and you think, oh, I'm a good enough comedian to make it work now. Yeah, or I have the right audience to make it work now. Because or like, look how hard yeah. I've tried for so long. Yes, I'm not a complete piece of shit. Yes. 
And yes. all these trash notes, I made something good out of. So let me make more trash notes. Totally. Most of the things. It's a great point. I think it's so important that with writers of anything, music, scripts, books, blogs, tweets, whatever you want to do is like first drafts are supposed to suck. Yes. That's the why it's yes. called a first draft. Just yes. get something down. Yes. So what I do, even with some days when I write, I only do premises. This is premise day. Great. No punchline today. I'll even write in bold joke. Yeah. Like the joke's going to come at some point. Right. Just premise, 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 premise. Yeah. And just just seeing a bunch of shit on a piece of paper totally. makes me feel like I'm not totally yes. trash. Yes. And and I I also found that if I said just write for 15 minutes, yeah. I would look up two hours later and i'm still writing it was the starting that was so that was so hard or just exercise for five minutes perfection perfectionism leads to procrastination which leads to paralysis yes so you just gotta start yeah which leads to depression i think and also i do things i have a little hourglass that i use it's a 20 minute hourglass yeah and just looking at it and kind of just like yeah i have to sort of um yeah. You know. And I think TM has been helpful and and running and playing basketball and those things have been really helpful. Mm-hmm. And then therapy is mm-hmm. yeah. And then I I go to this this mood disorder support group in in New York. That's cool. Uh, it's every Wednesday. I think that's so important. Like, you know, I think therapy is obviously if you can afford it, you know, great, but for yeah. me and the kind of st- I I really need to be in a group of strangers yeah. that I that yeah. humble me and make me go cuz totally. sometimes when I'm only going to therapy, it's like right. I start getting this idea that yeah. I'm special and right. and I get to control it and I can yeah. also lie to a therapist. I know. You know, when I go to a group of people it really, it, you know, that's why 12 step programs, you know, work so well for me is you're yeah. just like everyone out, everyone's yeah. going through something. Right. And I'm going to admit something disgusting about myself <laughs> in front of a group of people and they're all going to go totally. Right. Not a big deal. Yeah. You're only as sick as your secrets. It's yeah. that's why 12 step programs work because you admit something, the most disgusting, vile, embarrassing, nasty thing about yeah. yourself. And everyone just goes, yeah, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. But do you think also I found this to be the case for for my friend and for me because I was very lonely when I would go with her to the to the 12 step programs yeah. and it was just I now have a dozen people sometimes more around me and I feel better immediately immediately and they yeah. want nothing from you yeah. they don't care what you do yeah. and they haven't cast you in a role yes they don't know anything about you so they're not gonna be like oh whatever happened with that show yes yes <laughs> you were making yes I remember Kurt Vonnegut saying that AA is the is the greatest religion the most effective religion because it cures the loneliness oh so good yeah and you're also being of service to other people yes service it yes. sounds so nerdy but it's yeah. just sort of and like corny but it's it actually makes you feel better that's how you yes. build your self-esteem yes you we say this on the show you do esteemable action so just being yeah. there for someone else and taking the focus off yourself for five fucking minutes yes this can be such a narcissistic yes. disease you yeah. know and just go, and just listening to someone else um and also hearing you know something horrific we're like okay right. the fact that that person didn't respond to my email yeah. Is not the biggest thing that's ever happened. Yeah. I think Twain said, you want to cheer yourself up, cheer somebody else up. Ooh, so good. Yeah. Like, because I think that we're in this thing where, like, my thing and my pain yeah, yeah, and yeah, my yeah, trauma yeah, yeah, yeah. and me, and yeah. I hate myself. And then I'll help people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just help people by talking yeah. about me all the yeah. time. You oh know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like the I'm a piece of shit in the center of the universe thing. <laughs> The like, world incredible. revolves around how big of a piece of garbage I am. Yes. You know? Oh, my word. Just taking the focus off yourself. And this is one little thing. The last thing I'll say is um, I read that Sheryl Sandberg book on grief. Okay. I don't remember what it was called. The Lean In book was not. I have thoughts on that. I have a lot of notes. That book was basically like... <laughs> Just get five nannies. Oh. It was just like it was like a book for the one percent of women that have millions of dollars. Wow. Um, but she her husband died like really suddenly out of nowhere, and this grief counselor said to her, Imagine all the ways it could have been worse. Oof. Which is like the most fucked up thing. Like yeah. when I first read it, I was like, that's just like masochistic and right. sadistic of this person. But it was her um Husband died like on a treadmill, just I think an aneurysm or something. And then part of what he told her to do was imagine how it could have been worse. And she was like, oh, well, he could have been driving and the kids could have been in the car. Yeah. And she was like, oh, my God, I feel better. That's really interesting. So it reminds me of that Tony Robbins thing where something bad happens and you're supposed to say, how is this great? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a very good one. That's I read, one. Um, I like that Phil Stutz book, The Tools, too. It's kind of, he's a therapist who is, uh-huh. focuses on addiction and 12-step, and he Ooh. has a, uh, something called the deathbed exercise, where you imagine yourself on your deathbed thinking about your life. Wow. And I do that with food, where I'm like, if I'm like ever obsessing about like calories or something, I think of myself on my deathbed going like, how did you waste so much of your life? thinking about that stupid Den- denying yourself. Or if i'm like jealous yeah. of someone i'm yeah, like yeah. Can you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. why was i thinking about right. that person yeah. you know you put yourself on your deathbed yeah that's a great perspective just to stop worrying about yeah. shit that doesn't matter i love it that won't matter later yeah i'm gonna adopt that one um your tour is happening yes i get to come see you tonight Very yeah exciting. i can't wait it'll be wait. awesome yeah and tall glass is gonna be there cool yeah my favorite oh he's but my you're favorite doing a bunch too. of yeah. cities or yeah i think almost 30 GaryGoldman.com? Yeah. yeah. That edu? Dot <laughs> <laughs> org. It's a dot org? No, it's a dot com. GaryGoldman.com has all my dates on me. <laughs> Doing 30 yes. cities. Book not out yet. In process. Right. Twitter. A, a thousand pages. A thousand <laughs> words at a time. Um, that's how I'm going to... <laughs> Yeah. To, right. At least a thousand page, a, a, thousand a thousand words pa- <laughs> a day. A thousand words a day. Really? Yeah. That's Do you have a my, thing to measure it on your. Uh, yeah. There's a word count on thing. on on words. So I love that. I just yeah. asked how a computer works. Is there yeah. a way to find out how many words? Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Instagram and the Great Depression on HBO. On HBO streaming now. It's yes. brilliant. Don't. Oh, be, thank you. Don't be silly. Oh, thanks. It's game changer. Thank you. I'd like to end this This was very delightful. Abruptly. Yeah? Did you have fun? Oh, so much fun. Oh, Thanks. good. Whitney. Yay! Yeah. Goo! Yeah.